This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. I meet people all the time who they want to they want to they want to become a new person. They want to become a better person, but they don't want to change their thinking. They want to allow their thinking to be lined up with the customs and and the behavior of the world. And and this world is 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 it's it's a it's a place filled with discontentment. So to think at like them and then thus behave like them makes you you're going to put you're going to be putting yourself in a position where you're going to be discontent just like they are. How do I get out of the discontentment of the world? Hey, I'm going to allow God to transform me. It's time to live a life bold for Christ. It's time to come together from all over the world as we discover truth, build up our faith, and ignite a fire to reveal Christ in our daily lives. Don't miss the 2021 Grace Life Conference, July 15th through the 16th. Register now and get more info by texting Grace Life to 51555 or by visiting CreflodollarMinistries.org. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and uh, verse 6 through 12. I want to start off in the King James. Now, this is, this is pretty important here. I really want you to gain the context of, of what I'm about to show you. So listen carefully. He says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness plus contentment equals great gain. Verse 7, I'm going to read through 12. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. So why are you looking for things that you didn't bring in the world and you can't carry out to be responsible for making you content? He says, and having food and raiment, let us be therefore content. Having food and clothes, let us therefore be content. Verse 9, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money or trusting money, see, some people trust money for their contentment. He's addressing it here. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Now, see, we, he brings right in the mid, right in this context, he's talking about contentment, starts off with godliness plus contentment is great gain. But then he warns you and he says, don't try to find contentment in money. The love of money, what is that? That's trusting money instead of trusting God. And he says, the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, and they have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Verse 11, but thou, O man of God, flee from these things. F flee from the things that the rest of the world finds satisfaction in. The rest of the world finds contentment in. And he says, and follow after righteousness, follow after godliness, follow after faith, follow after love, follow after patience and meekness, verse 12. Then he says, fight the good fight of faith. You know what fighting a good fight of faith is? Fighting a good fight of faith means that you are going to maintain your stance on what Jesus has already done. You're going to maintain what Jesus obtained. The good fight of faith is, is when the circumstances try to get you to no longer trust in God, the good fight of faith is I'm not content based on the circumstances. You can't move me from trusting God. I'm going to trust God. 
I'm going to fight the good fight of faith, and you can bring it on, but I'm going to be content. I'm going to be satisfied in my relationship in Christ. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. He said to hold on to that. Now, man, that's, that's, that's something powerful. Let's, let's milk this a little bit. Now, I've come to realize that our world lives in a constant state of discontentment. Turn the news on. You, you constant state of discontentment. And we're not happy with, you know, people in the world, they're not happy with their wife, they're not happy with their husband, they're not happy with their children, they're not happy with their leaders, uh, they're not happy with the things that they have, you know, the TV is too small, it's outdated, the, the cell phone doesn't have the latest 5G technology. So we live in a world that lives in a constant state of discontentment. And so how do we find contentment in such a restless world? Well, I already told you, you can only find it in Jesus. You can only find it in Christ. And I know, I know when, when you know, Christian people won't have a problem with what I'm saying. But you go and you bring your unsaved uncle, well, I don't believe in Jesus. Well, you got a problem. That's the whole deal, man. The whole deal is that you came to the earth, you got a whole lifetime to figure out how to get connected with Jesus, or you die without him. And when you die without him, then the first thing you're going to realize when you're dead is that there is a Jesus. You miss the truth. And so we come to the point where we understand that that contentment, I find it when I find, when I get Jesus. When I, get, I start to say I find it when I find Christ, but Christ isn't lost. We're the one that's lost. We didn't find Christ. He found us, praise God. Now, many of us are trying to fill a void of some kind in our lives, and unfortunately, we try to fill the void with things that, uh, that can't really satisfy. We're constantly trying to fill the void with things that can't satisfy. You go buy the nicest car, it, it can't satisfy. You go buy the biggest house, it can't satisfy. You get the prettiest girl or the most handsome guy, it, it, it can't satisfy. There's a place in your heart that can only be satisfied by Jesus sitting on the throne of your life, and you keep sitting other things on the throne of your life, and they will never be able to bring you fulfillment because only Jesus can bring fulfillment, and you have to invite him to sit on the throne of your life. We look to fill the void with possessions or money, but we only end up wanting more, and that's the, that's the issue. When you're, when you're not content, it, it'll, it'll, it'll move you to greed. If, you, if you're not content, you want more. You want more. And uh, now, that, remember I said the difference between complacency and contentment, all right? So, we try to fill that void with relationships. Some even try to fulfill that void with sex, but we end up feeling even more empty and depressed than when we started. And so, when those things become the end goals, when the end goals become, you know, uh, money and car and house and, and um, sex and abusing people in relationship, when that becomes the end goals and the reason for our being, then we end up discontent. We end up discontent. I mean, after you get the big house you always dreamed up, then what? After you get all the fame that you dreamed up, then what? After everybody knows your name, then what? After you won the Academy Award or whatever the awards is, then what? That, that's, that's the thing. It's like I, I know so many people who have their goals, they reach their goals, and they're suicidal. So that didn't get it. That didn't get it. I, I, I see so many people that say, oh, but if I was making this much money, then I'll be satisfied. And, and oh, if I lived in this house, I'd be satisfied. And oh, if I had this kind of wife, I would be satisfied. Or oh, if I had this kind of family, then I would be satisfied. And then they get it. They work real hard, and, and they've disregarded all of the people that love them on the way. And by the time they get to the top or get to the spot where they want to be, not only are they not satisfied, 
but there's no one there to share it with because they pushed, they stepped on everybody on the way. And they're discontent because in their life, that was the, that was, uh, the end result. That was the thing uh, that they wanted to have in their life. And so, it's sad. It's sad. Those things were never meant to bring you fulfillment. None of those things I just mentioned, they were never meant to bring you fulfillment. And somehow, mankind thinks that these things will bring fulfillment. They were never meant to. You got to understand, God who designed the system, here's what he plugged into the equation. The only way a human will ever be fulfilled is in Christ. And a lot of folks don't want to hear that. But look at your life right now. Look at all the things you've worked hard for and you've earned. And look at all the money you got. And look at all the fame you got. And, and look at all the women you got. Or look at all the men you got. And look at all your business. And, and look at it. Just look at it. Whew. But you're still not fulfilled. And you'll, you'll die unfulfilled if you don't make Jesus the Lord of your life if you don't make Christ the one that you find fulfillment in. Let's look at some Scripture, and let's see what the Word has to say. Now, I've already looked at 2 Corinthians, but I want to look at 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 through the English Standard Version, the ESV. I want to show you something here, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 9 through 10. I want to share about five Scriptures with you, and let's just look biblically what the Word has got to say concerning this contentment only found in Christ. Here's what he said, verse 9 and 10. He says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. Wow. Now, that's, that's pretty cool because being content on my way to the next level, grace will be sufficient for me. Grace will be sufficient for me. Jesus will be sufficient for me. Remember now, grace is a person. Jesus will be more than enough for me. Hallelujah. Jesus will be my source of contentment. But he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect, my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Verse 10, for the sake of Christ, then, I am content. There it is. For the sake of Christ, I am content. With weaknesses, I am content. With insults, I am content. With hardships, I am content. With persecutions, I am content. With calamities, I am content. Why? For when I'm weak, then I'm strong because my contentment is not going to be based and found in the things that are going on not going to be based or found in whether I'm weak or strong or insults or not insults or whether folks are talking about me or not talking about me. That is not, I, I do not find my contentment in what people think about me or what they say about me. My, my contentment is in Christ, and that's what this Bible says, that I'm content with all of the other things that come. That's powerful. To know you can live in a discontent world surrounded by a bunch of people who are discontent and still be satisfied, still be happy, still have an ease of mind. And you've got to be careful now not to, to allow other people's circumstances to challenge you being satisfied and content. But even in the midst of hor horrific, egregious circumstances, I am content because I'm in Christ. That's a powerful thing to know. Look at Romans uh, excuse me, look at, uh, yeah, Romans 12 and 12. Romans 12, excuse me, Romans 12, 2 in the New Living Translation. Romans 12, 2 in the New, Liv New Living Translation. Contentment in life, I believe, starts with renewing your mind. And I believe that contentment in life, if you want to get away from discontentment, you're going to have to think differently than the world. You're going to have to think differently from the world's way of thinking. If you start thinking like the world thinks, then you will absorb the discontentment that comes from that worldly way of thinking. But if you'll renew your mind and make sure you don't copy the world's way of thinking, but you absorb the Word of God and, 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 and let it renew your mind, then you, what's going to happen is 
you're, you're going to be set towards contentment because you find your contentment in word and in Christ. Look what he says here, verse 2. He says, don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world. Why? God knows it all leads to discontentment. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person. How am I going to be transformed into a new person? By changing the way you think. Change the way you think, be transformed into a new person. I meet people all the time who they want to they they become a new person. They want to become a better person, but they don't want to change their thinking. They want to allow their thinking to be lined up with the customs and, and the behavior of the world. And, and this world is, 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 is it's, it's, a, it's a place filled with discontentment. So to think at like them and then thus behave like them makes you, you're going to put, you're going to be putting yourself in a position where you're going to be discontent just like they are. How do I get out of the discontentment of the world? Hey, I'm going to allow God to transform me. I'm going to allow God to make me this new person by changing the way I think. And I'm going to allow him to teach me how to think in line with his way, in line with his word. And the Bible says, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. When will I know God's will for me, which is good and pleasing and perfect? When I renew my mind. When I stop copying the behavior and the, the patterned ways of thinking of the world. Yeah, I know the whole world just looks at me and other Christians and they think, well, those guys are crazy. Of course the devil wants people to think that. But I tell you one thing, people who do this thing that I'm preaching and people that renew their mind with the Word of God, they're new people today. They'll knew people today, and they'll testify how they didn't believe, and they'll testify how they were big atheists, and that's why the devil doesn't want you to understand the Word. That's why the devil will do anything to keep you away from the world. Word, he wants, to, he wants to discredit people like myself so that you don't pay any attention to what we say, and then you think, well, uh, he's just, he's just a, a money-hungry preacher. All he wants is your money. All he wants is your money. That, that's even a lie. That whole phrase right there is just a lie from the devil. I mean, how come he don't have you saying all the grocery stores want is your money? How come he don't have you saying, you know, all, all the basketball teams want is your money? He don't have you saying that. Satan has a plan to try to stop you from hearing the truth that will bring you to Christ, the truth that will turn you into a new person, the truth that will cause you to renew your mind so you can come into the will of God that is perfect, and that is the perfect will of God, that is pleasing. That's the pleasing will of God that is good. That's the good will of God. Amen. Look at Proverbs 14 and 30 in the NLT. Proverbs 14 and 30 in, in, in the NLT. Discontentment and stress. Somebody says, well, what's wrong with discontentment? It will rob you of health. But when you're in contentment, you'll have peace, and contentment will give life to the body. Did you know that? Your discontentment, living a life in discontentment, it robs you of health. It robs you of life. Look at the Scripture here, verse uh, 30. He says, a peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. Think of that. You, you, now you know why I say if it costs you your peace, it's too expensive. Because a peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. He says, but jealousy is like cancer in the bones. Jealousy is like cancer in the bones. Jealousy, that's, a, that's discontentment. That's discontentment. In the middle of circumstances, you're jealous. That's, that, that's not going to be healthy to you. It's, it's walk, walking in contentment, walking in peace ministers health to the body. But walking in discontentment, walking in jealousy, walking in the flesh, It'll cause cancer in the bones. Man, that's powerful. I, I believe right now that the number one cause of cancer is discontentment and stress. There it is. I, I believe that the key to life is living a life of ease, a life of contentment, a life where you're satisfied whether things are going good or things are going bad. That's the key to to a healthy life and a long life and a healthy body. I had the Lord just say this to me a few days ago. 
He says, son, you do well to pursue self-control as a gift and a life of ease and peace, for that is the key to long life and happiness and health. And, and I'm learning how to do that. I'm learning how not to trip out over everything. I'm learning how to laugh a lot. I'm learning how to, you know, well, whether this thing is good or whether it is bad, all is well. You know, when they first announced the pandemic, I'm like, you know, Lord, you know, it, it, it's up to you because I'm in you. I mean, at the end of the day, if, if the church closes and everything, I still have a relationship with Jesus. And that's what you got to understand. At the end of the day, if you lose your house, if you lose your car, if you lose everything, you're never going to lose Jesus. You still can have a relationship with him. And that did something to me. All of a sudden, I, I, the care of the whole thing, I could roll it out over on the Lord. And that's what I'm wanting you to do right now, the situation you're in, man. Find contentment. Find contentment and divorce discontentment. Get it out of your life. Look at Job 36 and 11. Let's look at it in the NIV, Job 36 and 11. You know, I believe that serving God will allow you to have those years of contentment. I, I really do. I believe that, that, that serving God and, and being a follower of God will allow you to have those years of contentment. He says, if they obey and serve him, they will spend the rest of their days in prosperity or success and their years in contentment. I, 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 I just believe that that walk with God, that, that relationship with God, and, and, and I've come to the place in my life that when people ask me, you know, how things work, I, I tell them first base is a relationship with, with Jesus. First base is a relationship with Jesus. You're wanting me to give you the three steps to make that work. No, no. First base is relationship with Jesus. And when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ and you serve him and you walk with him, you're going to spend your days in prosperity and your years are going to be spent in contentment, praise God. God will speak to your heart and then you're, you're willing to carry it out. God will tell you to go here, and you'll go there. God will tell you to do this, and you'll do that. You're cooperating with him, man. You're walking in a place where you're saying, God, I give you the honor and the authority to speak into my life, and I'm going to do what you tell me to do. And, 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 and as I live this way, and as I serve you because I want to serve you in praise and worship and doing whatever you want me to do, I want to be your hands in this earth. I, I want to do everything you, you tell me to do, Lord. I, he says, you'll spend your days in prosperity and your years in, con your, your years in contentment. I want years in contentment. I want years in contentment. I do not want this side of my life on the other side of 50s to be stressful. I don't, I'm, I'm, that's not happening. I'm in peace. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I've been in the ministry almost 40 years, and I'm telling you right now, it'll be fine. It'll, it'll be just fine. It'll be just fine. It may not look like it right now, but it'll be just fine. And just live a life of contentment because I'm in Christ and all is well. Look at this last scripture in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 23 in the NIV. Proverbs 19, 23 in the NIV. You know, the fear of the Lord uh, will cause us to rest in content. Walking in the fear of the Lord will cause us to rest in content. Proverbs 19, 23, he says, The fear of the Lord leads to life. Then, the fear of the Lord leads to life. Then one rest, in, rest content, untouched by trouble. When you walk in the fear of the Lord, you're walking in reverence to God and respect to God. And I shared this morning that, you know, those that respect the Lord, you know, God says in the day of trouble, he will deliver them. We're walking in the fear of the Lord and reverencing the Lord and a respect there. It leads to life. And then you can rest content and untouched by trouble. Why? It's your relationship in him. It's your relationship with him. I, I, I need not try to explain to somebody uh, how to get something to work if they're not interested in a relationship in Jesus. True contentment can only be found in Jesus Christ. 
in his brand new two message series, What is True Contentment? Creflo Dollar shares what makes contentment that is pleasing to God. Get your copy right now for your gift of just 15 US dollars or more. After you get the big house you always dreamed up, then what? After you get all the fame that you dreamed up, then what? After everybody knows your name, then what? I do not find my contentment in what people think about me or what they say about me. My, con my contentment is in Christ, and that's what this Bible says. That's powerful. To know you can live in a discontent world and still be satisfied. Add the radical abiding in the word mini book to make a combo today and get all of these transformative resources for your gift of 25 US dollars or more. Have you ever wondered how the financial support from our viewers makes a difference in people's lives? We receive testimonies every day from people whose lives have been shattered by natural disasters, failed marriages, bankrupt businesses, and so on. They share how our outreach efforts and messages about God's grace have changed their lives in a tangible way. And for that, we give God all the glory. Today, I invite you to prayerfully consider financially supporting this ministry. We know you'll be empowered to see real change in others and prosper in your own life. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to creflodollarministries.org. God bless you. Creflo and Taffy Dollar love connecting with you. And here at World Changers, we understand the importance of using technology to do just that. We're constantly working to bring the gospel of Christ to thousands of viewers and followers around the world. And we want you to get involved. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We want to make the word of grace available throughout every voice of social media. Join us online as we bring you praise and worship from the World Changers Church family and the Word of God from pastors Creflo Dollar and Taffy Dollar. For more information, visit us at creflodollarministries.org. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this.